Hi everybody, it's Imogen and welcome back to Colouring Kid. It's currently half term so I thought I would try and do a couple more videos seeing as I've got more time. So in today's video I'm going to be sharing how I colour fur. So this is just me personally. Um, loads of people colour fur differently. It really depends because there are quite a few techniques. But I thought I would just show you mine. It's really, really simple. Um, and but firstly, I just want to say thank you so much to all of you that voted in the poll for my Kofi um, money. So firstly, thank you to all of you that donated. Um, it was so fun doing it and I am so appreciative of um, your generosity. So um, I've now got everything ordered so I ordered the Forest Girl book today and I ended up going with the Peter Pan book by Fabriano Atanasio so the the two were very very close the votes were very very close so um and they were fluctuating quite a lot so I decided to go for one of each just so that I could try out both of the artists books um and I'm just amazed at how many people voted as well so thank you for all of you uh, sorry to all of you that voted so if you chose one of the other three um, items don't worry uh, because I will put them on to uh, the next poll if there is one so they probably will take a while to arrive just because uh, the Forest Girl book is coming from South Korea um, but yeah that's that's it basically and um, if you want to know more about the Kofi um, fund and everything like that you can go onto the post where I explained that um, with the poll or you can go to the link down below which has the link to my Kofi page and you can read a bit more um, about stuff that I've put on there but yeah um, for now I'm going to do this tutorial so I do have um, my coffee so please excuse if I need to take a drink uh, as I've been you know talking quite a lot I found that my mouth is getting quite dry so I just need to I've just had loads of water and I might need to take a drink at some point. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to do this video. So um, I'm just going to explain a bit about why I've decided to show you how to do first. So one of my lovely viewers, SMC, uh, mentioned uh, the fact that they really liked my colouring and menu at De Bonheur and would I be willing to share how I coloured in it. And I don't really colour it in it anymore. I'm, um, when I did colour fur, or the animals in there, I really didn't do much. So I think that it's still really pretty and it was I was pleased with how it um, came out at the time. So this is kind of how I used to do fur. So it's not furry um, in the sense that I didn't do flicks and strokes like that to make it look like fur, but I did... Um, I did do the colours of the fur and kind of do the outlining um, but it kind of has progressed now and I'll show you a couple of the ones that I've done but especially with this what I used to do was I used to outline everything and then just fill it in and so I think showing something in here would be really hard to do because I don't personally colour her style that much anymore and I would find it quite hard just jumping into this and doing the fur um, but I think for um, a beginner as I was when I was colouring in this I was really really pleased with it and I followed the Chris Chang tutorial on how to do this one so you might not be able to see but I did do more strokes on that one so that was what I was most pleased with um, and then when I kind of started really wanting to learn how to do fur. I did a couple of pictures in the Mouse Guard book by David Peterson. So I did two in here and I used Prismacolor and I'll talk a bit about why I don't think they're the best pencils to use. So with this, although the colours and the actual strokes worked well and you can see the individual lines and I've gone over the, the line of the ear to make him look really, really furry. Um, because Prismacolors are really soft, the the lead breaks down more quickly. So because, um, you know, Polychromis are mostly oil-based, they keep a sharp point for longer and therefore they're better for the um, 
for the strokes because you want quite harsh lines um, not so much soft lines so that's why I personally don't think they're um, quite as good also this I mean this paper is quite smooth but um, obviously because the Prisma colours are um, softer they don't um, push down into the the tooth of the paper as much so there's more white space so you know there's more layering um, involved to try and cover that up and obviously with fur you don't really want to go over that much with a blender pencil because you don't want to mask the lines that you've done because obviously the lines are purposeful so fur's one of the odd times when you can be really rough with your strokes and you don't need a smooth finish I can already tell this is going to be a very long tutorial so I apologise um, and then I did this one which was with the cool greys in the Prisma colours so this was the cool greys and the other one was the warm greys so again I'm pleased with how it turned out and it's just a case of having to keep sharpening your pencils and wearing them down so they're not the best um, but I still really really enjoyed it and fur is actually really enjoyable to colour I didn't realise how much um, until recently so I did a picture this month from Fairy Celebrations by Clara Markova and I did this double spread. I won't go into too much detail about the actual picture because I'll be explaining it in my completed pages. But this uh, cat is the one that we're going to be doing today. So I kind of made it look like a tabby cat kind of. I did the ginger cat also um, next to it. But we're going to be doing this one because I was really pleased with how this one turned out especially. So within this... Um, uh, cat. It's mostly browns, not browns, sorry, greys, but then it's got one brown as kind of a uh, a bit of a different colour, so it kind of adds a bit to it, I think. And what was really good about this is because of the combination of pencils I was using, I was using some Holbein, some Polychromus. The Polychromus are harder, so they, um, they kind of um, wear down the tooth so that there isn't as much white space. So they were really, really good to use. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be showing you how I do this cat on another page in this book. So I won't zoom in because obviously we all know that the zoom doesn't really work. And I don't know why, because this is an actual video camera that I'm filming on. Um, but it's actually a very big picture, so we don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to be doing the head of the cat in the same colours that I did that tabby cat. You can see I've already been um, colouring a bit of it so this is what I was doing this morning. Um, some of the brown bits don't show up quite as well but because it's a bigger cat there's more scope and I just think that it's quite a good picture to um, to do and I wanted to colour this picture anyway so uh, it gave me the perfect excuse to colour it. So all of the colours that I used for the original cats are here so if you want to pause the video here and write them down if you'd want to use them um, feel free so that, that's the tabby cat and that's the ginger cat from the fairy celebrations Halloween page um, but I'm also going to show you the alternatives that you can use in Prismacolor so if you don't have Holbein and Polychromis and you just have Prismacolor then you can by all means use the Prisma colours instead. So these are the colour alternatives. So I'll read them out for you. So we've got Holbein Lamp Black, the Polychromus Warm Grey 5, the Holbein Raw Umber, the Polychromus Cold Grey 3, Holbein Warm Grey Hashtag 1 and the Polychromus Ivory. And then we've got three Holbein colours for the pink accents. So we've got Holbein Rose, Pink and Cherry Blossom. And then these are the alternatives in the Prisma colour. So we've got black, warm grey 50%, sandbar brown, cool grey 30%, warm grey 10%, cream and white. You need to kind of blend those together to get the ivory colour. The ivory colour in Polychromis is really unique. It's a very, very subtle, creamy white colour. So um, you could just use white instead if that's easier. And then we've got magenta, blush pink and deco pink. So all of the colours here correspond with the one right next to it. So again, if you want to pause that, I've made that hopefully quite easy to, um, you know, translate what the colours are. So I'm just going to put a sheet of paper behind my thing. Oh, I actually have already got one because so I was working on it. But this one's folded, so I will use that for colour testing on another page probably. So 
all of the colours that I'm using are in here. And then I've also got my sharpener, which is my Tagal sharpener. This comes in many different colours, and this is the one where, depending on the number, you can get different points. So for me, I don't like to waste my pencil course. I always do it on a number one, which is this. However, if you are using a harder pencil and you're doing the fur, sometimes it's easier to have it on a slightly higher point, just because... It's a, it's a longer point and it might last for longer so that's always a tip but the the really good thing about the sharp pencil core is that it doesn't wear down as easily you don't want a blunt pencil for example my horizon blue in the um, the Holbein is getting short and I actually sharpen this with a knife uh, well it's, it's like a it's a cutting knife but um, it's obviously really blunt because I don't want to waste it so this would not be good for a for fur so this is an example but yeah I've sharpened all my pencils ready the only other things you will need apart from the pencils that I um, just mentioned um, it's a colourless blender just at the very end you don't really need it there's still some white space that's left um, even after all of the fur because obviously you're not layering that much you're kind of just swiping across the page and um, creating lines you're not really blending things together so this is helpful you don't have to use it though you could easily use a white instead something like that and I've also got a Stadler Trippers Fine Liner in the pink. And this is the light pink that comes in the pastel set of six. So this is going to be a long tutorial. Oh, and a rubber of some sort if you need it. I'm just going to take a drink of my coffee. Okay, so I will have to keep referring back to my page just so that I can remember what I did so I think I'm going to start with the pink accents just because it's easier to then work around them so oh I'm going to get a grey as well do I have a grey handy ah yeah I do it's in my pencil pot so I am doing a grey for his teeth and I really love this page it's so cute and the pink I do for the outer line of his mouth and I've been loving using fine liner with um, pencil lately I am doing it on lots and lots of pages I'm just gonna turn you so that I can have a better angle to colour. Okay, so this is hopefully going to be a really, really easy tutorial to show you. So, um, I'm sorry, just going to have to keep flipping back. So, the nose of the other um, cat was black, but obviously this one isn't, so I'm just going to colour this pink. So, I'm going in with the Holbein Cherry Blossom first as a base. And then I am going to go in with the Holbein Rose and just go where the shadows are. So the thing I really like that Clara does is she does this pointillism technique uh, where she does all of the dots and then it's really easy to see kind of where the shadows should be. So now I'm going in with the Holbein Pink. Just going over that. I don't want this to be ridiculously fussy. I'm kind of just colouring it really. And it doesn't need to be really dark. I'm kind of doing it light. And then I'm just going to go over with ivory just to blend it all together. I really love the ivory because it's not white so it doesn't mute the colours. But it just blends everything really nicely. So the ears are exactly the same as this, what I've just done. So I'm not going to bother doing those. I will do those off camera and then come back. So I'm just going to do the mouth on camera now. 
so this way of um kind of tutorial is similar to how I did the butterfly and ivy and inky butterfly so I'm not doing the whole thing with you otherwise it will take ages but the things that are new that um will be different that I'm showing you I will do on camera so obviously there is small things like this that I do need to show and then I can do the same bits off camera because otherwise it'll get very boring me just showing you the same thing so I am going to go off camera now and do the ears and I will be right back okay so I've just done the ears now I've slightly adjusted the camera angle I hope you can't really notice um but yeah so the only difference with the ears is that I didn't use the rose color so I just used the pink and cherry blossom and then blended a bit with ivory so we're going to get started on the main portion of the face now and it's actually quite time consuming doing hair or fur um, you can apply this same method to hair on a person so if you're colouring a person you can by all means do that so what I'm going to do first is weirdly with fur um, you don't really want too much um, white showing through so that's not white space that's just the white of the paper obviously with fur it's very very difficult to cover every single bit of the area so what I do is I go in with a base first of the uh, lighter grey colour so this is the um, cold grey 3 and I'm just going to check how far it goes um, on him so with the face I don't actually colour all of it so I'm only going to do the, the grey a little bit so you don't really have to worry about feathering it out but you kind of just want to get that first initial base down like this so I'm going to go off camera and finish all that and I will be back in a minute okay so I finished all of that now you probably can't even see it because it's quite light um, but I've gone all the way around around the ears everything like that and I've come to about here so I haven't coloured any of this bit and that's because I kind of leave it um, I've actually taken a picture of my coloured image so I don't have to keep referring back to the page um, but now we've gone over with that I am just going to do one last thing with the pinks which is the um, the Holbein pink and we're just going to kind of do the crease line here so with very light pressure just go over them and the reason I kind of do them in pink is just because it's close to the nose and it's kind of quite a fun touch so cherry blossom now and then just leave them um, but yeah that's how I'm doing that so obviously with this being a different angle of the face it's slightly harder to show exactly how I did the other one and um, with the other one the head was um, back so it wasn't pointed as forward so you didn't get as much of the forehead so obviously more of this is going to be coloured in and it's just going to be this portion that is left more white than the rest so we're going to start with the lamp black now I like this black because I don't find that it's as um, in your face as the, the normal black I don't know if I've got them the, the wrong way around but personally I just prefer this black to the actual black in the whole binds so I'm not sure if you can see but there's loads and loads of little dots pointillism dots um, along the cat so this book does give the shading like that but it doesn't have actual uh, lines indicating the fur like Menuet de Bonheur so you are um, able to be a bit more free with where you put your um, fur lines so I'm just going to start some bits are going to be at a slightly awkward angle for me but that's okay so what you want to do is do a flicking motion like this so I'm if you can kind of see I'm not doing the lines right to the edge of the face I'm doing the lines in line with the pointillism dots 
and I'm kind of crossing them over so there's kind of a bit of a cross hatching technique as well. Now with this I am doing the lines here but it's more so for the shading rather than the actual fur obviously because it's by its collar there's going to be a bit of shading there and the other tip I have with doing the fur is to always keep rotating your pencil and by doing that you're going to make the point last for longer which is always a bonus so I may have to sharpen some of my pencils throughout this video um, with this I generally go in with small lines first and then as you kind of do the first layer and you go back over the lines can be longer so here there's a bit of shadowing so I'm actually just going to colour that bit normally rather than uh, with the strokes so just continue on let me check my photo. Okay, so I did do this. I don't do lines all the way. For this, I don't. I leave some of the top bit of the ear for the the grey. And the reason that I'm trying to make this look like the other cat is because I kind of like it like the fact that um there's a faint story running through this book and you know you see the same sorts of characters over again so I do want to make them look the same just so that you know it's it look it looks similar and I really enjoyed doing the other cats so I'm really happy to be doing it again and as I said, I wanted to get round to this again anyway, so this is a perfect opportunity. So with the lines here, you want to always be pointing your lines inwards. So for the face, that's what you want to do, and that's just personally what I did, you don't have to. Um, but with the legs and the arms and the rest of the body, you can kind of shape your lines however you want. So it doesn't really matter too much about those ones, but for these ones, I just paint, uh, point them inwards. So they're kind of the the first stages, if you like. So we've kind of just mapped out where all of the darker bits are. So now we're going to go in with the Warm Grey 5, which is a polychromous one. And I've kind of realised that with these pencils, I'm switching between the Holbein and the polychromous. So... We are going over the remains of the ear and kind of just doing these small lines over where the pointillism bit is. So you want to go over all of that black that you just did, but you kind of just want to bring the line out a bit more so you're increasing the length of the line and you do want to keep overlapping just so that everything comes together more and what you'll find is after doing the first round if you like of all the colors it's not going to meet where you need it to be so all of these lines aren't going to come up to here like they need to so it will take that second round to lengthen the lines of each color and then it should come together so as you can see you really can just take your time with this it's, it's quite therapeutic and it is really relaxing because you're just Picking your pencil. This is one of my favourite techniques to do. In terms of the lines towards the ear, I'm not doing the whole way just because I want to make these slightly lighter. So 
so again I'm pointing all of those inwards so it does look really strange at the moment but um, it will be better soon so the thing with fur is that when you kind of get towards the end point there needs to be a point where you kind of say right that's enough because you can just keep going and it is very time consuming um, so I will kind of show you at what point I would stop but you can keep going if you want but there does come a point where you know you've layered and layered up the colours and then you know it's kind of enough okay so now we're going to the raw umber which is the accent colour so this is obviously the brown which doesn't fit with any of the grey colours so with this you don't really want to overlap what you've done you want to bring it out more so instead of starting right at the base of all of the lines you're going to start kind of um, a tiny bit forward so kind of where your warm grey uh, lines end and you can start from the base for a few ones but mostly you just want to be bringing things out with these lines you want to keep them really short because the bit here needs to be quite faint the other thing is you want to try and have an even spread of all the colours so that's gen generally why I do all of it at once just so that there is no chance of me missing out a certain area or doing too much in one area you know it's kind of a continuous flow of moving around the page and placing the colour down so I don't know about you but I find tutorials where people explain what they're doing I find them quite helpful don't get me wrong I love listening to tutorials that just have music and just watching the colouring but sometimes it's helpful to have the process explained just in case you do want to follow along you don't have to you could just kind of use this as a colour and chat if you wanted to So that's pretty much done now and I'm going to go in with the cold grey which is the base colour that we did and you're kind of going to do exactly what I mentioned with the raw umber. You're not going to start at the base for lots of them, you're going to start kind of where the raw umber ends just to pull that colour and this is where your strokes really can um, increase. Although you don't want them to be too long here because this will be the slightly whiter area but they can definitely get longer up at the top What I will be doing the second time around as well is putting a bit of shadow where this ladybird is just to indicate the, the shadow that would be created. So as you can see here we've kind of got um, the lines meeting in different places so these ones are coming down and these ones are coming across so just kind of mask that, push them together. So this technique is very very similar um, all the way through pretty much so what I will probably do is once I've explained the next step and done it with you I will do a time lapse of the rest of the colours. I haven't done a time lapse before though, 
I do know how to do it on my computer, I think, so I'll just have to figure that out. Okay. So I'm not going to worry about doing the lighter colours, which are the warm grey one and the ivory yet. We're going to do those at the end. Um, but what I'm going to do now is go in with the warm grey five. And all of this area that hasn't been coloured that much, you're just going to colour it in. So this isn't strokes. This is just straight colouring. So you just kind of fill this in. And we're going to go over it again with the lamp black. So... It's an easy way of filling in the area without the need to try and do the strokes right up to the edge and you know spend ages trying to get it really accurate. It's just an easy way to fill it in. I am slightly far away from the camera, so if I sorry not from the camera from the page, so if I do miss anything out, I do apologise. And then we don't really need to colour anything in for that bit. So the process is now going to be exactly the same. So you're going to go in with first the lamp black, then the warm grey 5, then the raw umber, then the cold grey 3. And then you're going to stop there and I will explain what to do. So um, before I do the time lapse of that, I am just going to put in more shadows with the black and this is still with light pressure feel free to sharpen your pencils at any point if you need to and yeah so hopefully now you've seen the process uh, it will come together a bit more when I do the time lapse so um, I'm going to continue doing this on camera and uh, talk more about it when I have finished those steps So the majority of this is done now. What I'm going to do is go in with final touches. So it's going to be the lighter colours and putting a bit more shadowing in with the darker colours. So I'm firstly just going to sharpen my warm grey 5, I think. Yeah, warm grey 5, because so it's a bit blunt. And there are a couple of places that I do just want to go and reinforce that dark colour. And... This is kind of the point where you can just keep going and going. You've got to force yourself to stop at some point. Otherwise, you can just go on and on. So at the moment, especially with this bit where it's a bigger area, um, you can kind of see the different colours. And what you want is for it all to come together. So I'm going in with in some of the lighter bits and just adding some of that darker grey so it kind of comes together a bit better rather than just having the darker bits up here so I'm just going to colour normally to get the shadow a bit more there you know a bit more of a distinct shadow so if you didn't notice in the time lapse basically I was using longer strokes and that's the key to the, the second part if you will of the um, the colouring just so that as I said you, the space increases and especially for these big areas where ideally it would be around here um, you know it's much better and this can take a while because when you think about it you're creating a whole area made out of lines similar to if you were to do a whole page of pointillism so it does take time and it takes practice and I don't think even I've perfected it I mean I am still a beginner when it comes to this sort of thing so 
also SMC also asked at some point if I could um, do house mouse and as I mentioned I'm kind of trying to do Ivy and the Inky Butterfly in order but when I get to one of the pages I can definitely do that or I may choose to just skip about um, and do it at some point but for now I hope this is helpful in terms of fur so I've just gone in with black a tiny bit there so now I'm going to go in with the two lighter colours so we're going to start with the warm grey one which is OP521 oops, um, in the whole bind and the thing that you need to be conscious of here is you don't want to be going in the dark area too much with this because you're going to lighten it so this is really just about going at kind of the halfway point and just pulling it forward a bit you're really not going to be able to see this colour much, so it really doesn't create that much of a difference anyway, but it's just... So that it kind of blends into the white a bit better. And also, this is really good for just doing little lines and things here and there to kind of look like whiskers for this area. So I am just going to do a little bit here, because that wouldn't be just white. So just do a few crisscrossy lines there. And then with the ivory, I'm pretty much just going to do exactly the same, except that the ivory doesn't mask the colour as much. It does a bit, but once we've done this, we are going to go in with a couple of the darker colours again, so it won't matter much anyway. And you don't want to put too much of this down because it is slightly creamy. And so compared to the white bit here that we haven't touched, um, you know, it's going to be a little different, so just bear that in mind. You can very lightly just colour over that bit. You don't want to push down or anything like really hard, otherwise you're going to take away those lines that you put. You want to keep those lines um, as they are. So we're going to go back in with the Warm Grey 5. The Warm Grey 5 is definitely the colour that we use the most. Um, I just find that it's the best because it's not really really dark like the black but it's kind of the main colour so you could apply this to anything if you wanted to do purple fur make sure that you have a light medium and dark purple maybe a black and an accent colour so this could really be anything you could do a blue you could go crazy and do a yellow as a spot of highlight if you wanted to um, but it's really about having that that colour that kind of gives it a bit of a twist you know so obviously mine here was the raw umber but kind of think of it because um, with obviously polar bears they have white fur but underneath their, their blubber obviously isn't so it's kind of that colour that is hidden underneath so it's not the most prominent colour, but it's still there. So as you can see, I'm going back a bit with it. Um, with the raw umber. So now I'm going back in with the cool grey, and this will be the last time, I promise. You can just keep fiddling around so much with this. So I'm just going to go far down, pretty much to there. And then any places on the outer bit where the warm grey 5 isn't quite blended in, just go over it. What's a little bit. I put a brand new rubber in it, so it's much longer. So with this we are pretty much done. I will just go in and do these eyelids, even though I'm not really sure on what I want to do. I might just go in with the cold grey. The eyelids weren't on the other page, so it's always slightly one of those things. I never know what to do. So I've gone in with the cold grey and a tiny bit of cherry blossom. And then actually I'll go in with the ivory just a little bit. I'll probably 
mess around with those a bit more. So what you can do at this point is either leave it, if you like the white space, leave it, that's fine. Um, or you can go in with your blender. But here's the key, if you're going to go in with the blender, don't rub at it like that, especially because there's lines. If you're going to use the blender, do strokes, just as you would have done with the pencils, because then you're going to get the desired effect. You're going to keep those nice lines in you've created with the pencils, whilst also blending it out and minimising that white space. So you can just touch up like that so that's pretty much done I think so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and it's helped in some way I'll probably fiddle around with it a bit more before obviously I finish the page at some point but um, that's kind of how I would colour fair and this is obviously still very new to me as well so just bear that in mind but if you do choose to follow along with this tutorial I would love to see it so um, you can email me um, it's all down below, everything like that, but I would love to see it. Um, you know, the reason I started my channel was to help people and hopefully, you know, learn new things as well and show you things and um, just share uh, the colouring really because I love it. So, yeah, if you do choose to follow along, I would it would mean a lot. So, this is our finished face of the cat so cute I absolutely love this picture um, and yeah I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial so at some point this picture will be finished but it's still got a long way to go the head is probably the hardest bit though just because it's kind of a bit more unknown you don't really know what to do um, in terms of the face so I hope that it's helped in some way um, all my links will be down below as usual and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone!